this past week from the Omer Yesod Sheba Yesod, I felt like I really had a deep personal kind of lesson. Curious, what, what was your experience with Yesod Sheba Yesod? Well, we can kind of transition in this, but I'll start with, with saying, so last year I learned a mimer on Shechini Yacharecha, and I, re, I was just in Guatemala with Chad Bad Young Professionals International uh, a couple of weeks ago for a young uh, international trip. And we stayed at the Chabad of Antigua. And it was Shabbos morning, which happened to be my Hebrew birthday, the Yud Gimel ER. And the rabbi, Rabbi Haim uh, Silber there, was learning that mimer. And it was, such a, it was, it was nice because it was a refresher because I had... I had learned it a little bit the previous year, but obviously this year taking it to a new level. And each part of that um, poetic, let's say, phrase or sentence corresponds to Pesach, the counting of the Omer, and Shavuos. And so, for example, on Pesach, we are completely, you know, God exiles our godly soul. And any kind of chametz, is forbidden and we try and clean we find and we clean out any kind of chametz and then in a sense we have the counting of the omer after you we shall run the the godly soul that was exiled from hashem is now in a way reintroduced to the body in a way to now working on the different um, attributes teaching the animal soul to want what the godly soul wants and now by shavuos it's actually a mitzvah to eat, to eat chametz in a sense. You have the cheesecake, you have all the kind of stuff. So it's in a sense, now you can kind of return to how you were before Pesach. Meaning every day, you know, we wake up, most people, we, we respond or we react to the world. We check our phone, we get up, we go to the restroom because our bodily habits, we need to eat. We're reacting to the people that we see. It all of familiar things that reminds us who we are. But then when you have that, let's say that's before Pesach. Then you have Pesach and God exiles your godly soul. And then you have the counting of the Omer. You're, you're reteaching. <clears throat> you, you have this new inside, new identity of being the godly soul, of identifying with your, with infinity. And now you're retraining the body to want what, the uh, what God wants, what your godly self wants, and then on Shavuos, in a sense, and and onwards, you can kind of return to that original way of being because now your identity is with ident with with infinity, not with different material things. So even if you react or respond to different things, the environment, people in your life, uh, bodily the body, it's from a place of <laughs> identifying as infinity so as i've shared with you before and in this series meditation has been a powerful tool of mine of which i've practiced daily for many years now and it's helped break through different limitations um, mentally or bodily or um, habits but in a sense and i would it would be one of the first things i would do every morning um, even before, like I would learn some kind of chassidus or something, and then davening, and I would have different kind of intentions. But I realized, like, sometimes I would wake up like really early to do it, but would not. And in a in a subtle way, it would be even though it would be for an intention of aligning with Hashem and building concentration and focus, it's getting beyond some kind of aspect of self. But in a subtle way, that still means that there's some kind of self there. So on Yesod should be Yesod, I think, I think it was. I like joined a minion um, or I, I was going to join a minion. And sometimes I would wake up before to, to like meditate beforehand. But it was like it was a, a much earlier one. And I woke up um, with not enough time to do that previously normal routine of like meditation beforehand. But I felt this kind of uplifting or inspiration to actually just go daven and join with the minion first, and then perhaps meditate afterwards. And 
I bring up and sharing the Yesod Shabi Yesod and how that's very important because what is Yesod? Yesod represents the foundation. And what is the foundation? The foundation is the, the, the bottom. What is the identity? What is the core? And that is Hashem. And when we put that as and Hashem and the found, especially the Yesod within Yesod, the foundation within the foundation, which is God, then the, it, it's a greater level of understanding of these things, tools, the meditation, the nutrition that we talked about. All of it is a tool, all, or all of them are tools of which infinity, and you if, as the individual identifying with infinity, now can use not and not be used by. So in a very subtle way, perhaps by like being rigid with, oh, I have to meditate first thing in the morning. It was, in a sense, that was the identity or identifying with self, even, it's, even if it was used to get beyond that. And then it, I realized in a way that that's what Shavuos is. Because we're, now that we've, we've, our godly soul was exiled and we retrained the uh, body, the animal soul, through counting of the Omer, on Shavuos, now we are, in a sense, returning to that, what we, before um, Pesach, but to a higher, to a greater of awareness because of who we now identify as. Pretty good. <laughs> so I'd love, I'd love to, um, to continue <laughs> this conversation on, on that. <clears throat> what I had in, in plan, based on all that we've addressed from defining healthy and different mindsets and we've discussed the tools of breaking through different personal limitations and then a, the the fourth one kind of what I was even just talking about how to live a fluid not a rigid Jewish lifestyle and we talked about transformation and how the mind controls the heart and how to really create that dance between the mind and the emotions. Now I wanted to take that to a, a, a little bit further and, and, and kind of begin concluding, but also to help people um, start in a way, now that when this will be released, it'll be after Shavuot, how to, like you share in your latest book, create a life of that matters and how to really train oneself now with all that we've discussed and talked about. And even I just mentioned a little bit at the beginning to, to Eve do it Hashem Besimbra, had to, to serve Hashem with joy and to really train oneself, uh, like we just mentioned last time, with the, the mind ruling the heart, to, to, to feel and be in a state of gratitude and joy. And, and, and health, regardless of what, how things may seem. But we're going to receive the Torah. When we receive the Torah, we find out what the commandments are. So we discover that there are three kinds of commandments. Mishpatim. Chukim, Edus. Mishpatim means the mitzvahs that are obviously necessary, visibly beneficial to the, the human condition. Things that we might even do without being told, simply because they make a lot of sense. The second kind of mitzvah is testimonial. I don't know if I would eat matzah on Pesach if God didn't ask me to, but the idea of remembering the coming out of Egypt makes, a, makes sense. So those are the testimonial mitzvahs. We keep Shabbos to testify that God created the world in the six days. Rosh Hashanah is the anniversary of creation. Pesach is the anniversary of coming out of Egypt. Shavuos the anniversary of the giving of the Torah. So those are all testimonials. Then there's the third category, 
the chukim. Chukim are the mitzvahs that have no apparent benefit, no reason, no rational, even, well, no rational reason and no rational need. It doesn't feel necessary. It doesn't sound necessary. Listen to this fascinating idea. We know that there are humans, animals, vegetables, and minerals. When you do a mitzvah, because it is intelligently, logically compelling, that's a human level function. Because humans have intelligence. When you do a mitzvah with a passion, that's the animal in you, because animals are passionate, intensely emotional. Then there are times you do a mitzvah just instinctively. It feels comfortable. You're in the habit. Parents did it. Grandparents did it. Just comes natural. No thought necessary. No inspiration necessary. It's just the default position. My father did it. I'm doing it. That's the vegetable in you. The vegetable, the flower, grows, blossoms, without a thought and without a passion. If it gets water, it gets sunlight, and it gets a little nutrient from the earth, it all happens. It's kind of natural, instinctive, Then there are the chukim. That's the mineral. When you do a mitzvah, like a mineral, it just is what it is. You don't have a logical reason, you don't have an emotional passion, and you don't have a habit or instinct. It just is what it is, like a mineral. A stone is a stone. There isn't much else to say about it. That's the yisod. Yisod means it's fundamental. If it's fundamental, I don't need a reason. I don't need a passion. I don't need inspiration. I don't even need a habit. It is what it is. I'm a Jew. That's what I do like a mineral. Isn't it interesting that the Ten Commandments were engraved on stone. a stone? It's so basic, it's so fundamental, yesod. That's like, I would do a mitzvah if I, even if I was unconscious becomes who you are yeah it is who you are yeah so here we thought that there were mitzvahs that make sense there are mitzvahs that have a little reason for it and then there are mitzvahs that have no reason no. it's not three different mitzvahs any mitzvah you pick you can do it intelligently you can do it like a human being you can do it like an animal, you can do it like a vegetable, or you can do it like a mineral. Every mitzvah. So these three categories are not separate mitzvahs, they're separate orientations towards mitzvahs. So it's very good to do a mitzvah because it makes sense and it's compelling and you're convinced and committed. To, very nice. You're a mensch. It's also very nice to do mitzvahs with passion. 
your favorite mitzvah, you get passionate about it. Simchas Torah, you're getting high on, 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 on the holiness of the day. Very nice. Animal pleasure, but in godliness. Great. I tell a story about the Bardichever. I play the Yitzchak of Bardichev. He was so passionate about the mitzvah of Esrog, Lul of an Esrog, that when he woke up the first morning of Sukkot, he ran to do the mitzvah and reached to pick up the Esrog, which is when you do the mitzvah for the first time that year. And he was so passionate, he reached for the Esrog without realizing that it's behind the glass. And he put his hand right through the glass. Hey, that's passion. We usually associate that with animal. But in this case, it's an animal passion in the service of God. So that's another way you can do any mitzvah. And then the third is, you know, you're Jewish, you're in the habit. Jews don't eat pork, so you don't eat pork. Jews don't work on Shabbos, okay, don't work on Shabbos. I'm just going with the flow. That's a vegetable. You know, just plant me and, 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 and don't stomp on me and I'll be fine. But then you can also do a mitzvah like a mineral. It is what it is. It's my God, my Torah, my Judaism, my soul, that's me. I don't need the habit, I don't need the instinct, I don't need the passion, and I don't need the reason. I'm Jewish, so I do Jewish. It almost seems kind of like a, a, a spiral in that sense as well, like somebody, you could be doing something just out of mineral way and then you you grow and you develop the animal like the um the vegetable and then the animal and then the human so you include all of it that in that reckoning the mineral is the lowest and least um, impressive what i'm saying is that in some way In some way, the mineral is the best, mm. it's the highest, the most real. What's the teaching that the highest, the lowest, the highest of one world is the lowest of the higher world? So yeah. in that, it could be kind of... Yeah, if you want to be a maximum human being, then the highest is the ones you do with intelligence. But if you want to serve God maximally, hmm. the highest is the mineral. Interesting. Because if I'm serving you, then it's not about me. Wow. Interesting thing that it's engraved in stone, right? The word chukah which means decree without a reason, also means engraved. And doesn't it also mean freedom? Chakika, that means engraved. Yeah. What's the word for, for freedom? Hmm. Thought I wrote that before. Chirut. So what is, what is the difference between written and engraved? In writing, you're bringing together different medium. There's the ink and there's the parchment and there's the quill. So even when they're brought together, they still remain separate entities. And that's why the ink can sometimes crack 
and peel away from the parchment. But when you engrave letters in a stone, there's nothing there but the stone. And the stone becomes the letter. That's what chukah is. When you do a mitzvah because that's God, that's what he says, that's what he wants, that's what I'm here for, that's what I do, there's nothing else. It's you become the mitzvah, like the stone becomes the letter. So instead of being inspiring, like it inspires your heart, it becomes engraved in your heart. What is engraved? You're it. You, your heart is now in the shape of the letters of Torah or mitzvah, whatever. It's also the great unifier among people. If we're going to serve God and do mitzvahs based on our understanding, well, no two people are alike. There are those who understand everything. They're way out there in, in the stratosphere. And then there are those who understand something. And then there are those who understand nothing. And, and they have nothing in common. They're mutually exclusive. Like in the olden days, before the Baal Shem Tev, there were synagogues for the scholars, and the simple worker was not even allowed to be part of the minion. They had to have their own synagogue. If you do it out of passion, no two people are the same. Some people are more inspired, some people are less inspired, some people are not inspired. Even if you do it instinctively, you say, well, you know, I only do it because I was raised that way. My parents did it, so I do it. Well, not everybody's parents did it. So again, it's, it, it's, not, it's not unifying. It's every man to himself, so to speak. Okay. But if you're doing it like a mineral, what distinguishes you from anybody else? You can even you can even still include all of the others. Yeah. Because the the mode, the mode is the same, and you can still have great like levels of intellect or levels of passion. And, and it's like, well, I understand, I study, I become knowledgeable. That's what God wants. Like a mineral. Mm -hmm. God wants me to be inspired and do it with love. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm there because, well, if that's what you do, that's what you do. So that simplest, simple, unadorned, artless, that's what the Baal Shem Tev loved about the simple Jew. Down to the Yesod. Fundamental. So how can how can somebody listening to this and having listened to the previous episodes now begin to apply that into their um, into their own daily life? Good good question. Many people feel that they need to explain the mitzvah, understand the mitzvah, rationalize it, be inspired, be moved, be touched by it in order to do it. So the understanding becomes a condition. If and when I understand it, then I'll be able to do it. If and when I'm inspired, but since I'm not inspired and I'm not convinced, then I shouldn't do it. That's like saying, if I'm not, if I'm not a biologist, 
and therefore I don't know what a woman is. <laughs> if I'm not a biologist and I don't know how food works, then I can't eat. If this food doesn't turn me on and it's not inspiring me, I can't eat it. That's not healthy. You don't need an explanation for eating. You don't need a passion for eating. You eat because you eat. It doesn't need embellishment. It's found foundational. It's your soul. So this is in a, in a way, in a way it's liberating. It's like saying there are no conditions on your being Jewish. And somebody asked me once, I've never kept kosher in my life. Give me one reason I should. I said, the reason you should keep kosher is because non-Jews don't. In other words, keeping kosher is a Jewish thing. Non-Jews don't keep kosher. So why should you keep kosher? <laughs> it's a Jewish thing. You're a Jew. Do you think, though, that, like, in order to get to that space or recognition or even identification with the yesod or even that, that, that place of of not just intellectually understanding it, but really embodying it. The other, like the intellect or the passion can be used as, like we've talked about before, servants in a way, like to help, like I was just touching on at the beginning, like that's kind of what Shavuos, the whole Pesach counting of the over in Shavuos in a way can kind of represent. Like, because... Yeah. Otherwise, so many of us could be so resistant to just do it. What do you mean? That's so, you know, like letting go of intellect and all of that, which it's so pure on one level, but you have to get there in a sense. It does take, you know, breaking through limitations and, yeah. Resistance. and coming to that. Yeah, resistance, exactly. And letting go of lack of trust. Right. But that is not a condition. Yeah, correct. Yes, understanding the mitzvah will inspire me. And that's good. But it's not a condition. It's not like, like, it's, I like I, I, it's like I heard once, what do you have to, somebody asks, asks you, why do you love your wife? You need a reason? <laughs> it's your wife. There's no condition. There are maybe qualities you like about her, but. I mean, look at what's happening in the world today. We have become so enslaved. A girl saying, why should I be a girl? Oh. For the joys of motherhood. What do you mean, why should you be a girl? You are a girl. Why does that need to be embellished, justified? You don't need to apologize for being a girl or a boy. And we're going crazy. You mean I should just be a girl just because I'm a girl? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. See, we're, we're so inconsistent. Sometimes you say to a Jew, come on, put on film. He said, no, 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 that's not natural. Said, so uh, why are you gay? Well, it feels natural. Hey, make up your mind. You go by what feels natural. So I say, put on film because you're a Jew. So, just like that. Yeah, just like that. So something natural is a virtue or, or a flaw. It's 
So I remember once told somebody in the 60s, or maybe 70s, the guy said, why, why should I keep the mitzvahs? And the Rebbe said, why do, you, why do you wear psychedelic colors? Because you tried it and you like it. But when it comes to doing a mitzvah, no, you can't try it. You first have to justify like a philosopher. Come on, be consistent. Do the mitzvah the same way you do your hippie stuff. You tried it, you liked it, you do it. No, come on. See, don't make conditions. Somebody could also not like it. Yeah, well, if you don't like it, you have a problem. But you have no problem, so what's your problem? Well, make a problem. If, you know, there are, I guess, there are some people who simply don't like their gender. They really don't. But to make a question in everybody's mind, like just because you're a girl doesn't mean you have to be a girl. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> you know, cause, just because you're born Jewish doesn't mean you have to be Jewish. Yeah, it does. What could be better? So this need to justify reality, that's insanity. don't have to justify what is. If you want to make a change, you have to justify it. So I had, I had a thought. I was, I was going to ask, how can, how, can, how can we begin to learn to want to get to that level and to want to do uh, the things that are somebody like a Jew would do or somebody that's healthy, the things that somebody that identify with, with that would do. But then I, I think upon before I asking it, it seems like that's really training just the animal part of it. Like you were talking about, like the passion. Like through the practice of and meditation that I've, that I've done, you learn, you know, you get beyond the, the self, so to speak, or and you meditate and contemplate on things like, well, why would this be good for me or um, better expressions of the self and that, but that really is working, that works on the animal part and really aligning that with, okay, I understood intellectually that this is, this is good for me, or I understand intellectually that this is, this is what I do as a Jew. Not that's not what makes me Jewish, but because I'm Jewish, this is what I do. But ultimately, you come to the realization, like you said, like doing it like stone. But would <laughs> is that question? How do we tra train? How can we train ourselves in a way to un begin to under to realize that all of that is that necessary? Or is it just, I mean, maybe it's necessary for some just to get a more mature and whole rounded understanding uh, or not. A huh? Maturing process, yeah. It's like there is no greater love of a child to, to its parents than the love of a four-year-old. The four-year-old doesn't have a reason to love. He was not told to love. He lo he's inseparable. You know, he's one with his parents. And then he gets a little older and he starts to think, what's wrong with these people? You're inconsistent. And they start finding flaws. And, and all of a sudden, like, why do I love them? And they start finding reasons to love. But then when they get older, like when the child or the, the son or daughter are in their 60s and 70s, all of a sudden their relationship to their parents 
goes back to the four-year-old stage. Who cares what they did, what they said, what they My mother, my mother, like a four-year-old. That's the real love. A love that needs justifying, even when you justify it. It's not the so, it's not the real thing. When you need no justification, no embellishment, no, no force of habit, no conviction, just it is what it is. That's beautiful. There's, there's, there seems to be even with that, like you can tell a difference between somebody who there's like, there's levels between it. It's just the way that it is when it's really, somebody could be saying that as a way of like, somebody's overweight they and they could use that as an ex, as an excuse or a reason not to improve per se that's true but if they were sincere yeah it's a sincere that's the that's the way it is because hashem said so and they're healthy yeah any person who says yes i'm overweight it is what it is you're a healthy person but when it's killing you and you're embarrassed by it, and you need to justify and explain, and, uh, and then you're suffering. There, there is nothing more real than what you, what does not need justification. It's really, it's so pure and, and sincere. So when you hear a guy say, um, my dad, oh, he was really good at chess. Oh, you, you didn't get along, did you? You get that? You get that impression? My father was a great chess player, so he didn't like you. You're not acting like a son. You're, you're acting like a critic. So yeah, I watched him play chess. He was good. This is how you talk about a father. <laughs> You've given yourself something to admire. Why do you need that? Couldn't, it brings a good question. Let's say, let's say somebody is in a way tapped into that pure, that's the way it is, and they find somebody in their life, like a partner, a spouse, and they just notice that, wow, this really could be my, my partner, my, my soulmate, my other half. It does that, does that um, justification or finding the things that you admire come as a way of, of helping just to make sure you're also not perhaps fooling oneself? Because you, sometimes it can be a, you can miss misinterpret the signs from your soul or on the body with it could just being like a, a quick little passion or a true intuitive recognition of this other person's soul but that exactly is the difference between married or not married when you're not married all you notice are things yeah. reasons, values i like this i like that da, 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 da. Once you're married, just the person, huh? It's, it's just the person. That's beautiful. Oh. To, to, to bring, bring this episode and the, our whole series to conclusion, one thing I think it's brought to my intent, attention, and, and you, you mentioned this as well, even in our first interview, when I interviewed you about doesn't anybody blush anymore, but really one's life really becomes not about whether it's talking about health, um, physically, mentally, or, or anything. It's not about performance. It's really about intimacy with God. 
in in every aspect it's just when really when you grow it's it's almost like god just says i'll take care of i just want you to know me i'll take care of you know what job you do you're gonna enjoy it if you're really in tune you're gonna enjoy you're gonna be healthy you're going to have well finances etc i just want you to know me and it's really about intimacy how can you just grow closer in awareness with him as opposed to how do i do my job better or how do i meditate better how do i even how do i connect with hashem better it's not even about that it's like in the olden days when fathers would take their sons to work with them plowing the field come you'll sit on the on the on the on the mule while i'm plowing the field why? Because that way we stay in touch. That's called intimate. I can be with you or I can be away from you. Why would I want to be away? Come with me. So God says, during the week, I'm busy creating the world. Do it with me. Cook, bake, fix. But on Shabbos, I don't do that, so rest with me. Every mitzvah is that way. God is simply saying, I need you to be mine. How do we do that? Stay together. Do everything together. Be on the same page, always. Not because the page is important but because our relationship is important. So now you read the Torah, you hear it very differently. It's not, you have to keep Shabbos. If you don't, I'll punch you, I'll beat you up. Come on. Not you have to keep Shabbos. I'm keeping Shabbos. Where are you? On the seventh, I rested. What is God saying? I didn't create the world in six days. Why should I rest? So God says, because I am. And I need you by my side. So when I rest, rest with me. When I work, work with me. I'm holy, be holy with me. I hate pork, hate it with me. <laughs> be by my side. So we can do mitzvahs with so much more authenticity and we don't have to question ourselves. Am I sincere? Do I really believe? Am I really into this? Don't torture yourself. There's no need for that. You're a Jew doing Jewish things. Nobody will wonder why. So when, when somebody really taps tunes into that and it's in, in that you know the king brought me into the chambers the last part of Mashkeni, and you identify with that like we we're talking about the yesod and and now all those tools that helped you get there you know when you eat healthy when you take care of your body you take care of your mind you take care of your soul and you practice davening prayer and meditation it helps train the body so to speak to want what the godly soul wants and you begin to identify more and more breaking through different layers and veils to to exactly that to be in the king's chambers to be with god like you just said so then at that point when that when you really are that and you become that what how can we then what do the tools become to the person what's what would be the purpose of like like meditation anymore just a matter of perhaps building focus concentration um obviously the nutrition and that kind of that's always important that i can see but i'm considering now like i was sharing at the beginning with something like that what where do those tools come into play now now moving forward well at first they were they were contributing, they were helping you get mm -hmm. to where you need to be. After the fact, 
you have gotten them to where, to where they need to be. They started off being secular, personal stuff. Now you've turned them into support for mitzvahs. So they have become part of your godly life. So you've elevated them. So they need you more than you need them. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Wow. So how do, where do you think now people can take um, moving forward? Uh, like I said, when this people will be listening to this, it'll be after Shavuot, whether they uh, celebrated or not. Um, or Jewish or not, I think it's like an animal. applying this, applying this, the this concept, and almost like a, like I said, like kind of like a spiral. Like you're now after Shavuot, we're gonna be entering everyone on their own level, kind of another an, another level per se. It's interesting that there is no particular mitzvah associated with Shavuot. There's no shofar, there's no matzah, there's no sukkah, there's no lulav. So the essence of Shavuos is being comfortable in your skin. Your identity. I'm Jewish and I like uh, it. Then everything else follows naturally. If I'm Jewish, I eat like a Jew. If I'm Jewish, I dress like a Jew. Yeah. Let me just end with this little analogy. There was this guy who was very patriotic American. And he finally got to visit Washington. He was so proud. He was bursting. Oh, everything he saw, you know, the monuments and the, uh, everything was magnificent. Then he sees this building not far from the White House, and it doesn't look American. It's a weird architecture. And he hears music, song, coming from inside the building, and it's not American music. And he hears people talking, and it's not English. He knocks on the door. Some guy comes to the door, and he's dressed weird, not American clothes. So he's indignant. He says, how long have you been in America? The guy says, 20 years. He says, you've taken advantage of America, enjoyed all of the benefits of America, and you don't have the decency to talk like an American, to dress like an American, to sing American songs, celebrate American holidays. You're horrible. The guy said, excuse me, but this is the Norwegian embassy. <laughs> Our mission, our job, is to show you how Norwegians live. So if I dressed like you and sang like you, and said, I'd lose my job. So the guy apologized profusely. Jews represent Judaism. So are we justified in eating differently? Are we justified in singing different songs? Are we justified in dressing differently? Yeah, you don't do that, you lose your job. So our job is to be ourselves, not to look like Americans. So there's nothing more comfortable, more satisfying than when you can just be yourself. Not in rejection of the world, but in yes. pleasure in being who you are. It'll most likely it'll involve you into the world even more so, and in a better way. You will appreciate, yeah, authentic. So beautiful. An anniversary of a marriage, for example, a wedding anniversary. What what happens? You are thrilled that you got married. Not a detail, 
I was like, oh, today is when we uh, shared a pizza. No, 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 no. It's the whole package. We got married. The rest is commentary. So, Shavuos is our anniversary. That's when we became a Jewish nation. How much pleasure does that give you? How much pride? How much comfort and clarity? You know who you are. Such a blessing. Mm. Rabbi, thank you very much. It's been an absolute uh, joy, a pleasure. And um, may, you may you receive the Torah and internalize it with joy. Amen. Thank you very much again for taking all the time you've dedicated and shared with me here for these past six episodes. It really means a lot. It was a pleasure.